How does it come about, Sergeant Cribb, that although you instructed me where to take shelter... Blast, sir. The unpredictable effects of blast. Unpredictable, Sergeant? Oh, absolutely, sir. Yes. Well, I'm very glad to hear it. Excellent, Sergeant. A splendid explosion. You know, he's a good man. Mm. We'll be sorry to lose him halfway through the course. I'm leaving here, sir. So your Inspector Javit tells me. Javit. Hmm? Chief Inspector. Ah, uh, Javit. Obviously, we can't teach your Sergeant everything about infernal devices in a week or two. For example, he's had no instruction in actually how to go about making one. <laughs> No need for those talents at Scotland Yard. No, but he's proved a good pupil. Thank you, sir. Why did you send him on this course? That's what I've been asking myself, sir. So the whole country is threatened, Sergeant Cribb, by ruthless dynamitards, totally without scruple. Following the first explosion last year at the local government offices in Charles Street, there was the averted attack on the offices of the Times newspaper, then two explosions on the Underground Railway. A number of passengers were maimed for life by the Prade Street device. And now another attack on Victoria Station two nights ago. We thought at first that it was the work of European anarchists, but it seems the explosive used was Atlas powder manufactured in Philadelphia. Any other marks, sir? Cap and cartridge made in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Irish Americans? Possibly fighting to bring the cause of home rule before the public. Special branch should be able to deal with them. Isn't that what they were formed for, sir? Yes, special branch. They occupy the next room to mine. I had to give them my new telephone set and two clerical assistants. They've got brand new desks and a hat stand. Now what? What in God's name is going on? You can't go in. Oh. I didn't know it was you, sir. I didn't recognise you. What is it, Constable? I'm sorry, sir. You'll have to go round the side entrance. This way into Scotland Yard's closed. There's been a bomb. As I thought, the bomb was intended for the office of Special Branch next door. Anybody hurt? Fortunately, no, but there have been more. Simultaneously, while we were on our way back from the Royal Arsenal, there was an explosion at the Junior Carlton Club. In strict confidence, Sergeant, Special Branch assumed they made a mistake. The bomb was left at the rear entrance, which is virtually indistinguishable from a dare house. And a dare house is the home of the War Office Intelligence Department. Special Branch and the Secret Service at the same time? And a bomb was placed at the foot of Nelson's column. Fortunately, it failed to explode. I assume from the force of this explosion, the blast being directed vertically upwards, it was placed in a roofless structure directly below the office. Yes. In the public urinal against the wall. Quite. If it wasn't bad enough having infernal devices placed under our very, our very... Noses. Noses. These people are not petty thieves. All backyard murderers, they are well-financed, well-informed. They know as much about our own dispositions as we do ourselves. Don't like the implications of that, sir. And the Yard has always recognised that some of its people could be corrupt. We have reports of one of our own men hovering around railway stations and consorting with Irish Americans in a rather high public house called The Feathers. What did you do, sir? Had him placed under surveillance by Constable Bottle of the Special Branch. Met him, sir. An excellent man. Not anymore. The reason I had you recalled from your explosives course at Woolwich was that last night a body was taken from the river in Limehouse Reach. It was identified as Bottle. A bullet had penetrated his brain. Why do you want me on the case, sir? Because of your association with the constable who is under suspicion. Who's that, sir? I regret to tell you, Sergeant, that it is your sometime supernumerary and satellite detective, Constable Thackeray. Thackeray? We want you to penetrate the whole dynamite conspiracy. Hey, 
Hey, excuse me, but... Oh, my. Zachary! Fancy seeing you. Uh, can I buy you a drink? Sure got some. What brings you down to this pub, then? Sightseeing. It's a while since I've seen you. House crime in Rotherhide. Keep your voice down, Sarge. You knew the pub, you'd understand why. Well, it looks normal to me. There's more useful information to be gained from the public tap room than there is from the police gazette. You told me that. But why pick a faddish pub? You take them to the hard stuff. I don't want to sound ungrateful, Sarge. But when I was with you, I didn't get much chance for detective work. Not on my own. But now I'm mixing with them. Incognito-like. And I'm uh, trying to gain their confidence. Succeeding? Oh, I think so. The, um... Barge horse with the Piccadilly Weepers. He's an American. Says he's Irish. His family immigrated at the time of the potato famine. Mm, he keeps on buying me drinks. Far more than I can afford to buy him. Why does he buy your drinks? Oh, I don't know. He asks me questions about trains. <laughs> no, me and trains. I can't walk past the station without nipping in. Oh, I saw the Sunderland the other day, all knobby with the steam coming out. Anyway, ask me questions about stations. And then he buys me drinks. Can't make him out. I thought at first he was a pugilist. But he's got blisters on his palms, not his knuckles. A navvy? Oh, no. Not with whiskey at night, but it's a tot. Anyway, his fingernails, they're manicured. Oh, I'll tell you something else, too. His hands, they smell of spirits. Whiskey? No, Sarge, methylated. Amateur oarsmen use that stuff to toughen soft skin. Looks like an athlete. Stroke, pulling a punt pole? No, too big, something gaily. Odds on, you'll be a hammer thrower. Can't think of anybody else who'd have blisters on their palms. Any sort of sports programme going on this afternoon? Yes, Lily Bridge Field, hammer qualifying round. Used to throw the hammer myself once, long time ago. C Division Athletics team. <laughs> Honest. Nice day for a sports meet. Give me my hammer, please. Try this one. The sharp's Malacca. There's more whip in it. Yours is hickory. I'll give yours to the Englishman. Why would you do a thing like that? Maybe there's a drop of Aryan blood in me. Holy mother of God! I've never thrown anything that far in my life. Malachi, you say, huh? Would you ever have a drink with me afterwards? That I will. <laughs> the Gaelic American Athletic Club. It's like any other club. Some people can buy their way in. A social member, I see. Well, we came over together. Except that we were all steerage. Malone travelled on his own ticket like a gentleman. Do you know, I never even talked to him till after we docked. I'm, I'm not saying he doesn't look like a hammer thrower. No. But until he masters the art of, of turning in the circle, he'll never win anything. What if he trains? Hmm. He trains. He trains on the hard stuff. We've been over here for three months. 
And except for a few throws before our competition, you know, I've never even seen it practice. You ought to encourage him for the sake of the club. I'll go about a thing like that. We're all living in something not much better than a common doss house in West Brompton. He's living in a flash hotel in Regent's Park, the Alcazar. We never meet except at competitions. So he's uh, a man of private means, you think? Yeah, you could say that. And so, now let's have another drink. Danny, fill him up again. Oh, really, oh, I wonder, actually, if I could put this in there. <laughs> Sir? Seem to be. Can't think how. Probably you left your key on the inside, sir. Off now. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, sir. Great Scotland Yard, quick as you can, double fair. So kindness to untie me. Don't do anything else. A knock on the head has given my fingers a nasty twitch. brought us a visitor. I have, miss. Then why is he standing behind you? Because of what he's holding in his right hand, miss. A bowler hat? Because of what he's holding inside the bowler hat, miss. And what might that be? Would the rabbit, is it? Mr. Devlin's under a misapprehension. He thinks I'm holding a dangerous little article that belongs to him. 
but I popped it in a water bottle on the way in. Didn't catch your name, miss. It wasn't mentioned. I didn't catch yours. Sergeant. Michael Sergeant. Rosanna McGee. Miss. Patrick, why did you bring Mr. Sergeant here? He asked too many questions about Malone. I got suspicious when I heard him order a cabbie to go to Malone's hotel. Well, I followed him there in our four-wheeler. Out he comes and asked to be taken to Great Scotland Yard. My father will no doubt wish to meet you. See that our visitor is made comfortable, Patrick. And try not to behave like a jailer. He would hardly have marched you in here if he was thinking of running away. Handsome young woman. Obviously educated in England. Her father, Mr. McGee. The leader of your group, is he? What sort of a man is he? You'll find out soon enough. My father, Daniel McGee. He was the victim of an explosives accident some time ago. He lost the use of both his legs and most of his face was blown away. Because he can now only make inarticulate sounds, you might be tempted to think him an imbecile. But that would be a dangerous mistake to make, Mr. Sergeant. God, in his mercy, preserved his intellect. He will speak to you in the language of the dumb by touching his hands upon mine. First, he would like to know the reason for your extraordinary interest in Mr. Malone. And it better be convincing. I'm interested in making contact with the dynamite conspirators. And I heard of an Irish-American who was seen in Rotherhithe asking questions about railway stations shortly before the explosion at Victoria last February. My father wishes to know what you would want with the dynamiters. Were you successful in locating them? Want to join them, sir. Why? Well, you are patently an Englishman. I know a rare amount about the construction of infernal machines. I could be useful. You also know the whereabouts of Great Scotland Yard. Ah, thought your driver's carriage was a cabinet. Have you seen today's edition of the Times? It reports that an unexploded bomb found at the foot of Nelson's column had been taken to Great Scotland Yard, where it was left in the open for reasons of safety where anyone can see it. Now, it's asking too much of a man as interested in explosives as I am to stay away from a site like that. You're not an anarchist, are you? Only if the money's right, miss. I'm what you might call a professional adventurer. My father says that tomorrow you will have the opportunity to convince him of your worth, or otherwise. There is to be a small expedition. I shall expect to be paid, miss. Well paid. You will get what is due to you, Mr. Sergeant. My father is planning something quite exceptionally dramatic. For it, we will need more dynamite. This we plan to take from under the very noses of the British Army. Mr. Malone? There's a castle marked here near the river's edge. The army has a vast store of explosives there guarded by a few bored soldiers. Every Thursday at 2 o'clock, an army quartermaster, accompanied by a single guard, drives a wagon load of provisions to the castle. You and I, Mr. Sergeant, will contrive to meet them and join the British Army. about this son. Oh. All in a good cause. See that you're a 
fast mover. We were supposed to tackle him together. My God. There's enough stuff here to blow up the entire British Isles. All we want is the number one stuff. Take this. Friend Malone shot an officer. Oh my God! Captain Scott. my father that you panicked. He was on to us. He knew something was wrong. I had to kill him. We got away. We got the dynamite. That was a lunatic thing to do. A monstrous, callous act. I know what you are now and what you deserve. Now get below before I crush you. Forceful when you spoke to me yesterday. Nobody has ever spoken to me like that before, except my father. You were absolutely right. I should never have considered firing. I didn't give a thought for the dynamite. I might have killed us all. So you see, I deserved the chastisement you were ready to inflict upon me. I told my father about your behavior, your strength, your coolness courage. He was very impressed. Thank you, miss. So was I. We agreed, now that Mr. Malone is no longer one of us, you shall take his place. I shall want a level pony, 25 pounds for each successful detonation. Payment presents no problem, Mr. Sergeant. Our organization is very well supported. We have access to over 100,000 American dollars. My father is planning something very important, the culmination of our campaign in Britain. Two emissaries from the Revolutionary Directorate 
have arrived from America on the steamship Alaska. They will be here in the morning to give the final authority. They can also decide what to do with our prisoner. Prisoner? Someone we suspect to be a policeman. What makes you think that? He must be. He possesses all the characteristics. Thick skull, bushy beard and flat feet. I think he was trying to sell information to Malone. They're not paid very much at Scotland Yard, you know. Thou I've heard this. Tell me, is it usual for your organization to employ the fair sex? We are not all the insipid creatures some men take us for. And besides, modern fashion gives us a distinct advantage in carrying dynamite secretly to England. So take my advice, Mr. Sergeant. Have nothing to do with strange women on ocean-going steamships, unless you're prepared for a devastating experience. But I assure you, I have nothing under my skirts that might alarm you. Not if you're the man I take you for, an adventurer. It's me, Crib. Sarge. Sarge, have you come to get me out of here? Well, not exactly. Just dropped in, so to speak. What do you mean? Don't want to give the game away. They think I'm on their side, you see. Well, you can't leave me here. Now, you just cooperate with them for the time being. Yeah, but they'll keep me here forever. They think I'm in the force. They've got other things on their mind. I've got to go now. But keep your wits about you, and don't do anything until I give you the word. Oh. No half-baked heroics now. Warm night, Rosanna. I couldn't sleep at all. I was wondering if you wanted a bit of company. You'd soon tell me if I wasn't welcome, wouldn't you? But I have seen a bit of the world, young Rosanna. Patrick, what are you doing? I heard footsteps. Yes, I Maybe someone's broken in. Is the prisoner secure? Yeah. Yeah, I checked him. He's safe. And the doors? Oh, they're all locked. Then we'd all be much better off if you would stop imagining intruders and keeping everybody awake. I didn't imagine anything. Good night. God bless. Mr. Sergeant, our visitors from America have arrived. May I introduce to you Mr. Miller and Mr. Cass. So you want to take over from Malone, huh? If the terms are right. You know how to make infernal devices? That's right. You've got until 6 o'clock tonight to prove it. Uh, now, that's not very long to make a bombing. You won't be making one. You'll be making two identical devices. We'll pick whichever one we want to test. If it works, we put the other to real use. 
And then you'll blow up the folly with your first bomb to show Mr. Carson and Mr. Miller how competent you are. But both bombs must be identical. And they must both work. Your reputation depends upon it. Beastly brambles. Lace as delicate as that wasn't meant for promenading in the woods, you know. Yeah. If you'll just move your foot a fraction. Ah! Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I trust that your bomb making is more a strain than your love making, Mr. Sergeant, else you'll blow us all up. Much as I'm flattered by such a display of passion, I must plead to be released. Upon this occasion. Did you come into my room last night? Your room, miss? I was sure I heard you crossing the floorboards on your way back to bed, and Father was very restless. Not unless I was sleepwalking, miss. Oh, I see. My mistake. Your folly. At precisely six o'clock tonight, you must blast that out of existence. Right. I reckon about five pounds of explosive will blow that. So I shall need ten pounds in all, five for each. Now you said that one. Six o'clock. What time is it now? minutes late. I do not consider that a work of genius. Late? It's less than a minute after six now. Then your watch is wrong. But if you set the mechanism by it, then I suppose we can't blame you. In future, all timepieces will be synchronized. By my watch. to take the submarine boat under the battleship and with some sort of harness on the conning tower attach the bomb underneath it? Unreliable. Perhaps you can suggest a better way of doing it. How much explosive have you got in the store? Over 200 weight. And this is Mr. Carson's uh, proposal. proposal. Instead of trying to do clever underwater tricks with hooks and harnesses, we make sure that the bomb is lodged in the right place by converting the submarine into the biggest and most devastating infernal machine in history. In other words, we stuffed the subboat full of dynamite. Destroyed the submarine boat? It's, t it's taken me nearly a year to assemble it. I appreciate your sentiments, Mr. Devlin. Now be quiet. Mr. Sergeant's estimable bomb will act as the detonator. So, gentlemen and ladies, we sail at six o'clock tomorrow morning. Nice. Uh, the bomb will explode at exactly 10 o'clock. Blow up the Levitian and everyone on it. 
<laughs> who who navigate the sub? Good question. Of course, we'll need a navigator. I mean, there's only me and Mr. McGee who know how it operates. Well, it's very simple enough, but no. Oh no, no, no. I suggest, Mr. Devlin, that you pilot it to within a mile or so. Then you can get out. We'll have your launch close by. All right. Well, well, well that's that's fine. Uh, anyone can take it in at the last few yards. Yes, but who? Is it too much to ask that one of you should volunteer to steer the submarine boat to its place below the Leviathan and so join the ranks of those who've laid down their lives for the cause? It seems to me that this is an opportunity for a patriot whose life has been spent dedicated to the fulfillment of such a moment of history. I refer, Miss McGee, to your father. Will you make this sacrifice, Mr. McGee? No. No. He volunteered. Can't ask him. Clearly volunteered. You've got no right to ask him. He's given enough already. Oh, take the woman out. You can't Go do on. something like that to a man. And there's no take reason for him to do it. Yeah. Can't you get somebody else? Yeah. There's already a little punk. Ah. All right, Mr. Miller. I'll take it. Now, this is the plan. You're going to have company in that submarine boat, that policeman you've taken prisoner. He'll be tied up and heavily drugged with chloral, of course. Well, it's a convenient way of getting rid of him. Put me down. stop them. Put me down. Rosanna, I'll make sure that your father's all right. How? All this talking to him with your hands is nonsense, a masquerade. He can't communicate a word to you, can he? If he could, he would have told you I was in your room last night. He saw me. Now, can he still navigate that submarine? Yes. Would he? My father was a genius. There was nothing he couldn't do, but his injuries are much more serious than anyone has realized. His brain was irretrievably damaged in that accident. Mr. Sergeant, my father is like a child capable of performing the simplest instructions, but that is all. Why did you go on letting them think he could run the organization? I knew if they found out he was useless to them that they'd kill him. I'll make sure that he's safe. Uh, yes, I, I, I must just... Uh, uh, yes. Thackeray! Well, well, <laughs> another copper. <laughs> Don't move, or Mr. Miller will blow your ugly English head apart. So, you will accompany Thackeray and McGee on the last bit of the voyage. <laughs> Nice of two gallant protectors of the realm, actually manning the machine that destroys the Leviathan, the pride of the British fleet. <laughs> Pity there won't be enough recognizable pieces of any of you left for the authorities to appreciate the situation. You may all find yourselves with a police escort before the day's much older. Shut up, copper. You're a dead man. Have the decency to behave like one. <laughs> Everything all right? In my opinion, she should stay submerged for the last couple of miles. You think McGee is up to navigating it that far? He invented it, didn't he? And who do you think's been steering it so far? Hmm? Bombs bolted into the hull. 
And don't think it won't go off and set off the rest of the dynamite. One thing Mr. Miller and I are experts at, it's setting a timer. <laughs> Father is incapable of being brought to trial, and I have no doubt, no doubt at all, that she was never an instigator of crime. Women are all too easily led, Sergeant. I have suggested, and I'm certain my suggestion will be accepted, that Special Branch should keep an eye on them both. It'll give them something to do. Yes, sir. You'll be pleased to hear, Sergeant, that no action is to be taken against Constable Thackeray. Where did the submarine run aground, sir? Several miles away, Swanscombe Marshes. Wasn't Thackeray's fault, sir. He was still under the influence. Eh? Of the chloral. Ah, I appreciate that, Sergeant. First-rate man, Thackeray. I've always said so. What I still don't understand, Sergeant, 
is how you managed to construct two identical infernal machines, one of which blew a folly to bits while the other failed to detonate, particularly when you didn't know which device was to be used for which purpose. Well, sir, when I made the machines, I made sure that neither of them would work. I took all the powder from the cartridges that the pistols fired. But the folly was totally demolished. That one went off. I'm afraid not, sir. That box is still lying intact under the ruins. I simply removed a couple of bricks from the base of the folly, put in a few discs of atlas powder, and attached a slow match. Oh, is that all? I thought it was something clever. However, I don't wish to, to think that your work has gone unnoticed, Sergeant. The uh, Commissioner himself has gone so far as to make a personal recommendation, and I have agreed. You will be relieved of all normal duties for the next three weeks. Instead, you will complete the explosives course of the Woolwich Arsenal. You begin tomorrow morning at the point you left off. Craters and... Lachs! <laughs>